everyone, it's OMG Someone Actually. I am here with another video to give you guys some cosplay tips and tricks that I have learned and still want to use while working on cosplay. A little bit of background, we are all safe during this time with COVID-19. Our country has been on lockdown since Thursday, which is a little bit under a week ago. We are making the best of our situation and luckily us cosplayers are at home and we have time to spend making cosplays. Universities are going to move on to online classes soon and I'm quite excited but nervous about that. Enough about me, you were here for the video, so let's get on to it. Just a little quick update before I go to edit the video because I just realized afterwards that I haven't brushed my hair. So it's a little bit on the messy side, but I mean, this is this is me. I don't always brush my hair. Oh well. So just live with me. I haven't brushed my hair yet. At least it's an accurate representation of my life. So, yay! In this video, I have some cosplay hacks that I want to share with you guys. You know, one thing that I definitely know is that you can never <laughs> learn enough hacks or tricks that you can use in cosplay. You might be doing something one way your entire life and then suddenly you find a different method and it's just so much easier and you're just like, why haven't I found this in my life before? But I am here to share some of the tricks and hacks that I have learned and also that a few of my other cosplay mutuals have shared that they want me to share on this video. Oh yeah! <laughs> First hack is a clothing hack of sorts. Tights. I'm not sure about the males, but I know that us females have a quite a few skimpy outfits at times, and as comfortable as you might be wearing them at home, you're not necessarily as comfortable wearing them at conventions. I'm looking at you for a sword. <laughs> anyway, I usually use tights when I want to feel more comfortable in a cosplay when I go to a convention. It also hides leg burns or scars and it makes your skin look a little bit more smooth depending on what type of tights you wear. It can also add a little bit of heat to colder cosplays. Nadia has very bad timing with cosplays so she'll go out as Jack Frost in the middle of the winter and then get cold. The tights definitely help then for a little bit of extra heat because extra fabric. If you didn't shave, you don't have to worry because the tights are gonna hide it for you. <laughs> some cosplayers even sew some of their socks onto their tights um, or stockings or different details that they have on their legs or even paint the stockings if the character for example has lots of tattoos or markings on their legs. Um, so then you don't have to apply it to your actual legs every time, you can just put on the stockings and then you already have it. I know a lot of people also use it with tattoo sleeves, where they would cut up the stockings and make it into sleeves and then draw the patterns and you see they don't have to do all the body paint every single time, which is also quite nice. I haven't tried it yet, but I know of a few cosplayers who have done it before and it works. So you get two styles of stockings, actually three, but in this case I'm only talking about two. You get your full stockings, which comes up all the way to your waist, and they have full stockings all the way to your feet. And then you also get the tights or the leggings, footless, and in other words, it won't, it'll stop there your footsies will be open. And there are three main colors that I mostly use for my cosplays. The most common one is if you use black stockings. It's all especially nice if you want to get some extra heat. Then the next one, this one is a footless one. It's a honey color. This is the one the dancers mostly use. They wore this one for Jack Frost because you're bare feet. My favorite one of them all <laughs> that I use every time I can, especially with the skimpy looking outfits, is Oakwood stockings. I have a pair that is currently here. They are more see-through than the honey stockings. They have a little bit of a shine to them. If you wear them, they look the most natural. With the honey stockings, you can see they're wearing tights. But with the oak wood, the only thing giving away that you're wearing tights is the fact that it has a little bit of shine to it if you stand in the sunlight. Oak wood is definitely my favorite. Downside to it being so thin is the fact that they tear easily. I know with Elizabeth I wore them and I wasn't checking what I was doing with the cones that go around her feet and one of the pieces of velcro hooked onto the, the stocking and it just like tear all the way up and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go take these off now. The downside to using stockings is that once they tear, you can't fix them. If you notice the tear early enough, you can use some clear nail polish, but if the tear is too big, you're just gonna have to buy another pair. The good part about this is that the stockings aren't too expensive. The honey stockings that I have are 55 bucks. They aren't too expensive to replace and I have quite a few in my drawer I know for backups. Another downside is this doesn't apply to the black stockings as much, but definitely to the honey. 
um, and I haven't had it happen to me with the Oakwood yet. While I was cosplaying Jack Frost last year, we had parking outside the building and it started raining. The stockings, once they get wet, it takes quite a while for them to dry. So you could like see all the spots on my legs where the raindrops fell on me. Moving on to the second one because I take an eternity to talk. This one. Those of you who know me will probably know that I have done quite a few dance styles in my life. I did modern dancing when I was younger. I switched over to Irish dancing and at the moment I'm currently busy with Latin American and ballroom. During Irish they have these poodle socks that go up until your calf. And obviously that's a really weird space to get them to stay there. It's really hard because they keep slipping down. So they have sock loop, which is essentially just a roll on that you use, you apply it to your leg and then you wait for it to dry a bit and then you just stick the socks on. I of course took advantage of this and I've used it in multiple cosplays where I have to keep the high high socks. I used it for Soraka that you can see over here. I wore her to FanCon and EGE and I used sock glue both times to keep up the stockings and it lasted about four hours before it started getting loose. Which is quite a bit of time and if you think like if you didn't have that you would have to pull them up all the time while they keep slipping down. And Sock glue saves your life. <laughs> sock glue can easily be removed with heat. So I remember if we came back from dancing competitions, you, we would just like put our feet in a tub of warm water, just wait there for a bit, and the socks just release themselves because the glue disappears. The downside with this, of course, is if it's a really hot day, it doesn't stick as long. <laughs> so you're gonna have to reapply a lot more than you would in the colder weather. It can also be used if you want to keep up gloves and also if you have odd sleeves or accessories that are on your arms or your legs that you want to keep in place you can also use the sock glue there. Downsides of sock glue though is that they are quite pricey. We have two over here. Both of them were 230 rand. I mean it lasts quite a while. This is the second one. This is the old one that we still use from time to time but it doesn't stick as well anymore. I've had it for like five years now. The good thing is is that it lasts for quite a while. You probably won't have to get a new one but they are a little bit pricey to begin with. An alternative to this, of course, is that you can also use Prit if you don't want to buy sock glue, but just be aware that Prit is not meant to be used as sock glue, but can work, it just won't last as long. Other thing is just finding it. As far as I know, you can only buy them at stores that focus on Irish dancing. I know, for example, we used to buy them at the competitions themselves. There are businesses who have supply of sock glue. That's honestly like the only place where I've ever seen it. I haven't searched online yet but I'm sure you will be able to find some if I find some I will put it here. Next I'm moving on to storage ideas. I only have one here but it is really helpful and it has helped me a lot and it involves something that you wouldn't necessarily think of using. TikTok boxes. I have a lot of them. A lot of a lot of TikTok boxes that I collected because I use them and it works. Now you might be wondering Nadia what are you using this? I am using mine for my bobby pins. So I have some of my bobby pins in here and I just like, you just like chuck them out in your hand. It's really nice because you don't have to go put your hand into the tub of bobby pins and then fish out 70 of them at the same time. And it's a really nice easy container to store them in. I have an extra one as well that I can fill up if I need some. I also for example use them for some of these pins that I bought a while ago with these pearl at the top. So I also have a little tub where I put them in. Ooh, I, I would definitely recommend it for my pits. As you can see, this one is full. There is like barely any space in there. Only downside is that we don't locally have Tic Tac boxes that are this big. I got both of these overseas. The biggest one I found locally was this size, which is a little bit smaller than this one. If you compare them. But it is still able to work as you can see because I used the pull once I put it in here. The next two hacks are about wigs. When I started cosplaying, I didn't realize how expensive things like wigs and material and costumes and things would be because you're just like, I want to do this thing, let's go for it, and then you see the price and you're just like, what am, what am, I, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> One tip I can definitely give, especially to beginner cosplayers, to try and buy generic wig colors that you can use for more than one character. So this is where cosplay planning comes in handy when you can see like, okay, these are the characters I want to do. What color or length wigs do I need for them? And then you can see like, oh, okay, these three have the same wig color or length. I can probably use the same wig for them. And then you buy a generic wig for those three. Especially if the styles are quite similar, it's even easier. <laughs> You know, for example, one of my most famous characters that you might know is Elizabeth from Seven Deadly Sins. I cosplayed her twice, but I also used the same wig 
for my Jack Frost and you can just literally use a wig for so many characters or for example my green emerald wig that I use for Star Guardian Soraka mostly but I also use it for Frosh so try and find wigs that you can use for more than one character and it literally saves you so much money <laughs> some local source that I would recommend for our South African cosplayers is Glamour Hair and Sandin it's usually my go-to for basic wigs they all come unstyled they don't have a really big variety of colors and styles it's mostly 100 centimeter wigs a few of them will be 80 and then it's either straight or curly wigs and then they also have some short wigs they are definitely my first go-to, otherwise I can also recommend Coscraft, who I know is a local company and they source wigs from Epic Cosplay Wigs, which has a way bigger variety in both styles and colours. You, you just look there and you're like, I want all of them. <laughs> but they are a little bit more on the pricey side due to the fact they have to source the wigs to excellent stores to find wigs that you can use for multiple characters. Another tip that I can give you guys regarding wigs is that you can tease the hairs or use print to style the bangs of the wig to lie flat against your face to make it look more natural. A few days ago I cosplayed Eri from My Hair Academia and during the live stream I also told people this. In this video that I'm going to put on this side you can see that it just looks a bit more realistic if it's closer to your face because then it doesn't you don't see a gap there and it just looks a little bit more natural than what it would have if you don't stick it to your head. Contact lens struggles, yay! <laughs> I only started getting into contact lenses myself two years ago and I have been using it for most cosmos that I can. I think I have five pairs of lenses. All of them being cosmetic lenses. A few of my cosplay friends, they can't wear contacts either because they are too scared to use them or they have some sort of problem with their eyes and they literally can't use them. Um, they're being too expensive because they need to wear glasses and you don't, you don't layer lenses. It's really hard to come by prescription lenses that you can use for cosplay with like bright colors and things. And they're usually expensive so I know of quite a few people who don't use lenses. But a good thing that I can recommend is, especially if it's a character that has a really unique color, well not unique, but it's like pink or red or something, then there is hope for you. <laughs> there are countless apps on the App Store that help with editing eyes. Obviously this only works if you edit photos afterwards, it is possible. But just remember, like, it, you don't need contacts to do a cosplay correctly because some people literally can't wear contact lenses so if you are one of those people don't feel bad I am I am blessed enough to be able to wear contact lenses without a problem but you don't have to feel bad if you can't you are definitely not the only one of no way does it say in the in cosplay's definition that you have to have contact lenses to qualify the costume as a cosplay like no way <laughs> This is like a given, but try to find things locally. Foam you can get at Sondor or Coscraft. Try to get wigs locally, try to get contacts locally, try to get fabrics locally. Firstly, you're supporting your local creators and local stores, which so is a really good thing and it just builds the community over here and it just, it just grows. <laughs> and we might get more materials and things later on if they realize that this is, this is a hobby. People do this over here try and support local as far as you can. If it's commissioning other creators, I know there's Ludus Cosplay and quite a few others. There are also local stores that source cosplay, costumes, wigs and lenses for you. Top of my head I can think about Coscraft here in Cape Town and also Concept Kitty up there. Pattern making. This is a really awesome hack but it can be quite annoying at times and you will understand why in a bit. Have you ever had to create a pattern for a cosplay and you're just staring at it and just like, how am I supposed to do this? I'm talking about top patterns, armor patterns, and you're just you're like, where, where, where do I start? Fear no more. One of the best ways to make cosplay patterns is using glad wrap and buff tape. I have used this method myself quite a few times. I remember the first time I used it was for Star Guardian Soraka because she has this really awkward side panel that doesn't go straight down. It goes like to a slight diagonal. Like say for example, you want to make a top and you know, okay, it doesn't have any straps, so it just comes to here and like, stops at the waist. 
Then you wrap a little bit higher than the top and a little bit lower than the bottom. Then you use buff tape to make sure the entire piece that you want the shirt to be is covered. And then you use a sharpie or a marker to draw the pattern. You can draw details, you can draw seam lines, anything. And then you cut the pattern off of your body really carefully. Do not hurt yourself, please. Either on a seam line or where you would place a zip, which is what we did with Soraka. This we place the zip at the back, so that's where we cut the pattern open. The plus side of this way of pattern making is that it's fitted to your body. You know that it's gonna fit at the end. You just put your add your seam lines and your extra centimeters to know where you make your seams, and it will most definitely fit accurately if you did everything right, which is really cool. So you make patterns for your body shape. It is mostly used for shirts or chest armor, but it can also be used for leg armor. I know we use it for Soraka as well to figure out how we're going to make her stockings. You can use it for gloves, you can use it for uh, arm braces, any anything that is on your body you can use it for to find or to make a pattern. A big downside to this way of pattern making is that it gets really hot on the inside of the glad wrap and the buff tape, and you don't notice that until you cut it out. <laughs> I remember when we did Soraka, it was from here on downwards to my hips and I didn't even notice that it was really hot until we cut open the pattern and there were literally little beads of sweat everywhere. And then when I felt the cool air, I realized how much I was sweating because it's so hot in there and there's no airflow. So just be wary of that and do not keep the buff tape and glad wrap on you for too long because there is no airflow due to it being so tight and body fitting. Do not pull the patterns in any way until you have traced them down on paper as that will change the pattern and you could probably make quite a few mistakes that way. So try and trace them down on paper as quickly as possible. I cannot stress this enough! On the other side, this tip was recommended by Mex Nov Cosplay. When it comes to armor making, especially if it's shoulder plates or chest plates, any kind of armor, try and make the pattern out of a really thin cardboard first. That way you can see if the pattern works, is the shape okay, do you want to alter anything before you move the pattern over to foam. That way you just save so much more materials, you save yourself from making mistakes if you made a mistake somewhere and you can see it like, oh no, I'm supposed to change this. Recommended by Kiwi Cosplay over on Instagram. I use this one as well, is to use magnets to pick up dropped pins. Like I have a carpet in my floor and if I drop a pin, I'm never gonna find it. So what I do is I have these really strong magnets that I bought somewhere, I can't remember where, and I literally just draw them across the floor and try and pick up the pins and it really helps. And I'm really glad that this is the thing because otherwise I would have stepped in so many pins and they would have hurt. So you can pick up your pins using magnets. Two tips I have for crafting. The first one, and this was also recommended by Nev Cosplay, but I have used this myself as well, is to use googly eyes as rivets. Now, we all know these little googly eyes, and I've used them on my Elizabeth Cosplay. The top, I added little googly eyes that I painted silver and gold. Another crafting thing in terms of jewelry. I started working on Fantasy Bakugo and he has this big string of necklaces. He has four of them, and like really shiny. You don't find shiny what it means. So one of my friends suggested to me that I use clear nail polish. I'm gonna try and find the video that I took of one of the earrings, like I painted one half with the clear nail polish and the other half not, so you can see the difference. And I'm gonna open this tub now. One downside to the nail polish is definitely that once I open this tub, my room is gonna smell like nail polish for the next three hours. Just be careful with the fumes. Okay, hi. And as you can see, it's really shiny. You can see the light reflecting of it, and that is literally what I wanted to happen. And now my room is gonna smell like nail polish. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a few tips and tricks. Comment down below if you have used any of these yourself or if you have any other tips and tricks that you want to share with other cosplayers. I'm pretty sure we can all help each other out and you can never stop learning new things. Yeah, until the next video. See you guys sometime. Bye bye! I'm not in the center of this camera. You're gonna see that they. That they no, no. As I. As is. What up? I was I my things is that and then you you can that alternately on the what am I doing with my hands I don't know <laughs> Kiwi Cosplay that pen just fell.
I'm gonna go fetch that. Why didn't I just sit here from the beginning of the video? Why did I sit so why did I sit so far away? And can I just like someone please like hit me over the head? Thank you. Okay. Why did I not sit this close from the beginning? Now I'm sad. <laughs> and now I have to go to edit all of this talking nonsense that I have. Yeah, but it's okay. More content for you guys.